thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Namibia also uh, joins the others to welcome the, the draft IHR Global Strategic Plan to improve public health preparedness and response, which is indeed a long and overdue in initiative. Mr. Chair, we take note that the recommendations of the review committee on the role of the IHR in the Ebola outbreak and response served as primary instrument that informed the development of the strategic plan. It would, however, also be comforting to know that the development of the global strategic plan is indeed informed by the existing gaps in member states, which should be derived from the results of the joint external evaluation and national action plans which are underway in many countries. Uh, Chair Namibia hosted the joint external evaluation in December 2016, and it was indeed an enriching experience for those who participated in this mechanism. While we appreciate the mechanism itself, we would like to take this opportunity to point out that much of the evaluation in the JEE is a, as a tool is subjective. Our experience has shown that the outcome is subject to perceptions and leave room for subjectivity as opposed to objectivity in the final score of the, of the, of the assessment. Hence, Chair, we advise that the JEE tool, especially the way the questionnaires are formulated, should be revised. We believe self-assessment coupled with peer reviews are excellent mechanisms to monitor implementation and keep member states' um, as momentum on, on par to ensure implementation of the regulations. We appreciate the work of the Secretariat in organizing and constituting the JEE teams. While we have no ob particular objection to this chair, we would also advise that for the sake of impartiality, the member states should be given the prior opportunity to vet members of the JEE and agree to its composition. Mr. Chair, we are pleased to see that broad partnership will be pursued, especially with international organizations that have the specialist insight within key areas of the regulations, such areas as chemicals, radiation, and transport. The significant presence of some of these international organizations on the African continent, coupled with existing international legal, legally binding instruments in the sphere of these areas of the regulations, is an excellent opportunity to further enhance member states' readiness and continued compliance with the regulations. Uh, we call upon the Secretariat to, to prioritize links with these organizations including links with African-based networks that specifically promote compliance with international legal in instruments relevant to chemicals, radiation, and transport issues. I thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Namibia, for highlighting uh, the issue of the JEE and uh, observing, in your view, that it is subjective rather than objective and that members should be vetted by countries, those who go into the JEE, um, and also your emphasis on linkages um, on the issue of international health regulations. Thank you, Namibia. Guinea, Guinea, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, la Guinée, qui préside actuellement l'Union africaine, réitère ses félicitations au Directeur général pour son élection et toute sa reconnaissance à la directrice régionale pour tous ses efforts pour l'amélioration de la santé en Afrique. La Guinée remercie le secrétariat pour la qualité de ce document technique. Et concernant le RSI 2005, il faut noter que la Guinée a effectué entre le 23 et le 28 avril 2017 l'évaluation externe conjointe de ses capacités et le pays élabora bientôt un plan d'action pour la mise en œuvre des recommandations issues de cette évaluation qui sont 
renforcer la coordination et la collaboration multisectorielle entre les acteurs dans une approche une seule santé pour améliorer la sécurité sanitaire tout en renforçant le leadership du ministère de la Santé dans la coordination opérationnelle. Accélérer la mise à jour des textes législatifs pour la mise en œuvre optimale des capacités et l'application de toutes les dispositions du RSI 2005. Faire le plaidoyer pour la mobilisation de la contribution financière de l'État. Maintenir le dynamisme et la collaboration multisectorielle établie lors de l'exercice d'évaluation externe. Le pays est en attente d'un soutien du bureau de l'OMS Afro et des autres partenaires techniques et financiers pour l'élaboration d'un plan d'action issu des recommandations de cette évaluation. Tirant les leçons de la lutte contre le, la maladie à virus Ebola, le gouvernement guinéen, à travers le ministère de la Santé, a créé, suivant un décret présidentiel du 4 juillet 2016, une agence nationale de sécurité sanitaire chargé de répondre rapidement et efficacement à toutes les éventuelles menaces de sécurité sanitaire. Cette agence est la cheville ouvrière du contrôle de la maladie en Guinée. Elle est le principal lien entre Africa CDC et la Guinée, quand bien même que d'autres structures du ministère de la Santé seront impliquées dans la collaboration pour la mise en œuvre du plan stratégique de Africa CDC. Elle bénéficie déjà de l'appui de plusieurs partenaires techniques et financiers impliqués dans le contrôle de la maladie, dont l'OMS et le CDC Atlanta. L'Agence nationale de sécurité sanitaire a pour mission la mise en œuvre des orientations stratégiques du ministère de la Santé en matière de sécurité sanitaire. Et à ce titre, elle, a part... elle est particulièrement chargée de mettre en œuvre les textes d'orientation opérationnelle sur la sécurité sanitaire du ministère de la Santé, plus spécifiquement un plan d'intervention pour les urgences. Participer au renforcement des capacités du personnel en matière de surveillance et de prise en charge, veiller à l'aménagement des espaces de mise en observation et quarantaine conformes aux mesures spécifiques requises, veiller au développement d'un système national de surveillance des risques sanitaires et de réponse aux épidémies, urgences et catastrophes, participer à l'élaboration de la cartographie des risques sanitaires à travers le territoire national, promouvoir le développement des systèmes d'alerte précoce et douane, participer à la riposte publique à toute menace attentatoire à la sécurité humaine, animale et environnementale, veiller à l'application du règlement sanitaire international. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Well, thank you, Guinea, again for emphasizing a multi-sectoral approach led by the Minister of Health in country. Um, Guinea, DRC, DRC, you've got the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, nous commençons par présenter les excuses de Son Excellence, Monsieur le Ministre de la Santé publique, pour des raisons d'État, c'est évident, l'obligation d'interrompre sa participation et de regagner le pays. Cela étant, Monsieur le Président, pour le sujet en concerne, la RDC remercie le secrétariat pour avoir inscrit ce point à l'ordre du jour de la session, compte tenu de sa pertinence dans le contexte d'un monde aujourd'hui de plus en plus éprouvé et secoué par l'émergence et la réémergence des événements de santé publique à fort potentiel de propagation internationale avec un impact très négatif sur la sécurité sanitaire internationale. Eu égard à son destin épidémiologique, l'ayant déjà conduit durant les quatre dernières décennies à affronter huit épidémies de la maladie à virus Ebola, et aussi, tenant compte de sa superficie, au-delà de 2 millions de kilomètres carrés et de sa position géographique au cœur de l'Afrique, avec 9 pays limitrophes et 411 points d'entrée, les sujets demeurent d'un grand intérêt et a poussé le pays à examiner avec une attention soutenue le contenu du document susmentionné 
par ailleurs bien structuré et à l'occasion de dire maintenant qu'elle ne trouve rien à redire sur les douze principes directeurs phares et les trois piliers du projet du plan stratégique mondial quinquennal euh, qui sera soumis à l'Assemblée mondiale et qui sera soumis au Conseil exécutif en janvier euh, de l'année prochaine en rapport avec l'amélioration de la préparation et l'action de santé publique. Au sujet de l'opinion à émettre sur l'outil et le déroulement de l'évaluation externe conjointe, JII, pour la mise en œuvre du règlement sanitaire international 2005 au pays, la RDC approuve la pertinence de l'outil et de l'évaluation externe qui fournira ainsi les éléments de base pour combler les différents gaps récurrents euh, depuis son entrée en vigueur dans la mise en place des capacités minimales requises pour le RSI. La République démocratique du Congo offre sa disponibilité à prendre part à toute consultation future en rapport avec la sécurité sanitaire internationale. Monsieur le Président, tel est l'essentiel de nos propos au jour d'aujourd'hui sur cet important point de l'ordre du jour et merci d'avoir donné la parole à la République. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, DRC, for supporting the document. Uh, Benin, Benin, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Le Bénin, à l'instar de beaucoup de pays, a procédé également à l'évaluation conjointe externe de la mise en œuvre du règlement sanitaire international. Et actuellement, nous avons une feuille de route pour l'élaboration du plan opérationnel. C'est l'occasion de remercier l'OMS pour son accompagnement et de demander davantage son soutien pour finaliser ce document. Pour ce qui concerne le projet de plan stratégique mondial quinquennal, nous avons étudié le document, la délégation bénoise a étudié le document. Les neuf principes directeurs et les trois piliers nous semblent assez cohérents et nous estimons que le document tel que présenté est un document essentiel de base. Le Bénin apporte son soutien à cela. Le défi essentiel de, du succès de ce document, comme l'a dit le ministre de l'Afrique du Sud, c'est parvenir à régler la question de la multisectorialité. Et pour cela, au Bénin, il y a un engagement fort du gouvernement, puisque actuellement, la coordination, le plaidoyer de toutes les actions liées aux épidémies est associé à une structure de la présidente de la République. Et donc, cette structure appuie le ministère de la Santé dans le plaidoyer et dans la mobilisation des ressources. Ceci facilitera l'intersectorialité. Je voudrais partager euh, cet esprit du Bénin et dire également notre disponibilité à euh, participer au, à tout le processus futur de finalisation de ce document. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Benin. Uh, RD, the issue of multisectoral coordination in country keeps on coming up. Uh, so it's a, it's a sore point. I think it needs to be looked at. Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Zimbabwe takes the floor to contribute to the debate on agenda item 7. Zimbabwe appreciates the proposed framework towards the review and development of the five-year strategic plan. The 12 guiding principles and three pillars as stated in the document are indeed informed by our collective and shared experiences over the years as we struggled to fully implement the international health regulations of 2005, especially around the area of core capacities development where the need for cross-sectoral collaboration and commitment is paramount. The Ebola and yellow fever outbreaks experienced in our region should further inform and mold the proposed five-year global strategy development. Clearly, we need a strategy which is both broad to cover all eventualities, but focused and flexible enough to effectively facilitate response in context-specific situations. We look forward to actively participate and meaningfully contribute into the five-year global strategic plan to improve public health preparedness and response. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Zimbabwe, for emphasizing the issue of coal capacities and to tap into the uh, Ebola 
outbreak experience in, in West Africa. Thank you. Um, Cabo Verde, you have the floor. Muito obrigado, Sr. Presidente. Em nome do Governo de Cabo Verde, queríamos congratular e apoiar o documento apresentado. Gostaríamos também de reforçar alguns pontos contidos na estratégia, nomeadamente a criação a nível dos países dos institutos nacionais de saúde pública, a comunicação em rede entre os diferentes institutos de saúde pública, a instalação das instâncias nacionais de coordenação no âmbito da estratégia de uma só saúde. Por outro lado, o programa Redis para a África Ocidental e a dinamização do CDC de Abuja. Sr. Presidente, queria também chamar a atenção desta magna casa, desta magna assembleia, para a importância do suporte também aos pequenos países, sobretudo aos insulares, para a criação de condições para a segurança sanitária e para a implementação do regulamento sanitário internacional. Os pequenos países têm, pela sua dimensão territorial, pela fraqueza das suas economias, que apostam sobretudo no turismo, apresentam um alto eh, grau de vulnerabilidade aos eventos de saúde pública, particularmente as epidemias. Cabo Verde, por exemplo, nos últimos quatro anos, já passou por duas epidemias com importância internacional. Falo da epidemia pelo vírus de Zika, e também a epidemia pelo vírus de dengue. O Governo de Cabo Verde está a trabalhar, a investir fortemente na resiliência do sistema e acreditamos que ao abrigo de uma política de coesão que deverá existir entre todos os países africanos, mas também com o apoio das organizações internacionais, nomeadamente da OMS, da OAS, Uh, creio que nós poderemos atingir os objetivos em nome da segurança sanitária internacional. Muito obrigado, Sr. Presidente. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for that contribution. And I think to point out those peculiar vulnerabilities for the small islands, uh, ROD, I think it's very, very critical there. Um, finally, uh, Botswana. Good morning, Chef. <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the Secretariat for this wonderful document. I'm happy with the technical guidance provided by WHO uh, thus far, which basically underscores the importance of a strong monitoring and evaluation framework. The data that will be generated will facilitate us having um, informed uh, decisions. I think uh, my nickname should be Country Ownership. I keep on re-emphasizing country ownership in most of what we have done. It is very key in the whole process as we implement these international health regulations, which is why we welcome the extensive, the extensive consultative process uh, which are currently uh, ongoing on the draft five-year global strategic plan, uh, as this will facilitate this ownership and implementation thereof that I'm talking about. The guiding principles and pillars of the five-year global strategic plan are explicit but would also like to support uh, my sister on her proposal where she talked about the importance of sharing data, uh, both within and um, across or between countries. Botswana is working on a joint external evaluation in the coming months, and we look forward to results there too. The findings will better prepare us to respond appropriately and in a timely fashion. We look forward to close collaboration with WHO and other partners uh, as we address these findings. In conclusion, Botswana supports and endorses the document. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Botswana, our country ownership and the issue of sharing of data. I think that's key. Finally, finally, Madagascar. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président, de m'avoir donné la parole. Monsieur le Président, tout d'abord, je tiens à féliciter, en tenant féliciter le secrétariat d'avoir mis dans l'ordre du jour et pour le, la qualité de ce document sur le, le RSI et sur ce plan stratégique mondial quinquennal. Je voudrais vous partager l'état actuel en matière de RSI à Madagascar. Tout d'abord, en matière de capacité de prévention, tout d'abord, nous avons des services de santé à chaque niveau, des centres de un centre de vaccination international. En matière de capacité de détection, nous travaillons en étroite collaboration avec l'Institut Pasteur de Madagascar, qui est notre laboratoire national de référence. Nous avons des laboratoires dans tous les centres hospitaliers régionaux et dans quelques centres hospitaliers de district. Nous avons également un service de santé aux frontières, des services de santé aux frontières, huit sites exactement. Et au niveau central, la direction de veille sanitaire et de la surveillance épidémiologique. Enfin, en matière de capacité de réponse, nous avons des services des urgences et de réponse aux catastrophes dans toutes les 22 régions de Madagascar un service de lutte contre les maladies négligées et un service mobile d'intervention et de riposte au niveau de ces 22 régions. Récemment, le mois de juillet dernier, une équipe d'évaluation externe conjointe était venue à Madagascar pour, euh, c'était le moment pour nous, l'occasion de faire savoir nos réalisations et les recommandations émises par les experts internationaux nous étaient, nous étaient vraiment utiles. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Madagascar, for really supporting this document. Um, I think uh, honorable members and heads of delegations have made their contributions. I'll revert back to Dr. Uh, Dr. Yoti. Dr. Yoti, yes. Let me take this chance to really sincerely thank all of you for these very useful contributions. This will enrich the document. Uh, especially the key issues you have raised that needs to be reformulated and then those need to be, which need to be added. Uh, let me just uh, recap some of the things we had and also respond to a few of the, uh, of the concerns. Uh, let me start by saying, really congratulating the countries which quickly undertook the JEE, the Joint External Evaluation Process. Mr. Chairman, last year you recall uh, during the regional committee, you approved a document for health security and emergencies in the region, which was a regional strategy. And in that document, we said by next year, by the end of next year, 80% of the countries should have done JEE. So today, I just want to say that 22 out of the 47 countries have already completed the JEE, and you have, you have had them really positively sharing the experiences on how it went, so let me congratulate those countries. Again, six more countries have uh, uh, asked for JEE technical support this year, so by the end of the year we'll be having close to 30 countries already completing the JEE. But JEE is not the end to the, uh, the means to the end. JEE is a small process, a very short process, which leads to development of national action plans, which needs to be resourced which needs to be implemented, which needs very clear roadmap for implementation and monitoring to build those capacities. Therefore, it's not, JEE is not a precondition for financing. I need to be very clear on this. It's not a precondition for financing. Secondly, uh, there was an issue about mechanism for sharing data and information rapidly. Indeed, this is a, a core pillar for IHRA. IHRA aims at facilitating that process. So I want to assure the delegates that this is included in the, in a, as we develop the, the, the plan. Thirdly, there were common themes which came from the various uh, contributors. We had very clearly the need for more technical support and financial support. They need to help the countries to mobilize the resources both internally and externally. We did recognize that there are some countries which have already finalized the national action plans. Actually, three countries have done that. 
with Tanzania going to launch it in their parliament so that they are able to mobilize internal resources as they look for some other resources. We would like the countries to take that example and they, and they repeat in their countries. Another common theme is a need for multi-sectoral platforms for strategic collaboration and the issue of uh, having the health sector in the leadership. This has been emphasized. The issue of uh, the peculiarity of the small countries that depend on tourism. And this is exactly what the International Health Regulation sets itself to address, the issues of trade, travel, and not disrupting economic activities. Therefore, better reporting and detecting events early and responding to them at the source. I want to emphasize again the emphasis which has been put on the country ownership. For sure, this is going to be the pillar which drives everything. Among other things, uh, Mr. Chairman, because of time, I just wanted to highlight this few. But to finish with, uh, I would like to assure everybody that a simulation exercise has been planned during the meeting in Kampala. There will be a simulation exercise similar to what was done when the G20 uh, meeting was held. And the simulation exercise is part on and uh, partial the part of the G of the IHRA implementation simulation exercises. We have organized simulation exercises in countries, but we take advantage of these big gatherings to organize simulation exercises as well. So Kampala will have a simulation exercise as well. Uh, with your permission, if I can just say, if you can allow the director for IHRA from Geneva to say a few words with your permission, sir. Uh, director from Geneva, a few words. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And in fact, I have virtually nothing to add. But just maybe to stress the difficulty of intersectoral collaboration, which is true not only for uh, health security issues, but overall for a number of health uh, uh, topics. Um, and I have to say the involvement of Prime Minister's office is always a plus uh, to facilitate this involvement. So this being said, we certainly continue to support countries. Uh, and also on tourism and mass gathering, we have developed guidance which are used um, in Gabon not too long ago for the national uh, the African Cup of Nations. Um, and for a number of countries looking for help in mass gathering, we also can provide some support. I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll give the floor to the uh, regional director. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and uh, I'll try to be brief. First, thank you, Honorable Ministers and, and Heads of Delegations for this very rich feedback which can only improve the document, as my colleague has said. And I would like to <clears throat> add my own thanks and congratulations to you for having very quickly turned around and shown your interest in conducting these JEEs and, and getting a better handle of what are the capacities and what are the gaps in countries. I, I, we, we can say that we are very proud of the speed with which our countries in the region took on this, this work and we were pleased to be able to support you. Clearly you are asking for additional support and we are trying to make sure that we are able to, to provide it. Um, I've understood that during the JEEs other sectors are engaged in the process and this might serve as the beginning of a more continued sustained engagement of these sectors. I, what I'm observing is that we will need to find, learn about what are the best mechanisms to truly engage the other sectors, whether it needs to be a structure placed at the level of the prime minister or president with uh, what we have observed of previous experiences. So I would ask our team to document the different experiences and try to see what sort of models we can put in place which are effective in, in uh, engaging the other sectors. Um, it's been, we've been asked to cooperate with other partners, including the Africa CDC. I'd already indicated that we are very committed to this. I do think that some of the multi-sectoral mobilization, one, and secondly, the advocacy for domestic financing can be done also jointly through with the Africa CDC since our heads of state um, adopted a declaration on the IHR. So this is some of the work that we'll be doing as well as engaging at the country levels. We note 
the comments about the need to review the tool. I'm sure our colleagues have done so, and we will try to see that it becomes a truly more objective tool. So I think just to say a very hearty thank you. Our, our region has shown the leadership, the interests that we think justifies a very terrible experience we had just come through, and now it's time to develop costed plans and to look for every opportunity to help them finance. We've understood in some of the sub-regions, for example, in, uh, in the ECOWAS countries, there is a project supported by the World Bank called Redise, where we, un we have understood there is potential for financing for your costed plans. So we are going to be working with you and with the World Bank and other partners in, to facilitate this financing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Moeti, Dr. Yoti. Um, uh, very clear, uh, very reassuring. Uh, I, I think you have really absorbed what uh, the member states have said. The, DD, uh, the DGG will speak later, uh, but on this particular one, we're going to move on straight to uh, the next agenda item, agenda item number 11, and I hope it's a very important topic. I hope you can gain time on this one, uh, however, um, on the framework of implementing the global strategy to eliminate yellow fever epidemics 2017-2026 in the Africa region and its document AFR stroke 67 stroke 8 I will give the floor once again to Dr. Yoti to, to represent and representing the director for WHO health uh, emergencies program to, to introduce this document Again, thank you, Chair, uh, Honorable Ministers, our distinguished delegates. On behalf of the Secretariat, I have the privilege to introduce document AFR stroke RSC 67 stroke 8, entitled the Framework for Implementing the Global Strategy to Eliminate Yellow Fever Epidemics, referred to as I-2017-2026 in the African region. 10 years period to eliminate yellow fever epidemics in the African region and globally. Uh, we all recognize that yellow fever threat is increasing and it's becoming real, more real. And this increased threat due to yellow fever prompted us to work with the partners to develop a global strategy to eliminate yellow fever epidemics. Uh, the, uh, 35 countries in this region are at, at a higher risk of yellow fever, meaning majority of the countries have increased the risk. Uh, recent outbreaks that occurred both in urban and rural areas in Angola and DRC indeed demonstrate this potential of yellow fever to spread rapidly. You may remember that from these outbreaks, two cases were imported to Kenya and more than 10 to China, but good enough, these didn't cause local epidemics there. So yellow fever through this was able to demonstrate again its potential for global spread, and in any case, to cause a global uh, uh, problem. But the region is challenged by suboptimal routine yellow fever vaccination, and it's leading to really such a uh, threat. And also this is related to the frequent stockouts of the vaccines and gaps in implementation of international health regulations. These risks are further compounded by the climate change and the rapid urbanization, not so well planned. And all this will lead to more frequent yellow fever outbreaks and other aboviruses as well. So this regional implementation framework has been developed to support the rollout of the global strategy in our region. There are three strategic objectives proposed in this framework. One, to protect populations in all the 35 countries at the highest risk through preventive and routine vaccination. Two, to prevent the international spread of yellow fever through robust screening and vaccination of travelers at major points of entry. Then thirdly, to detect, confirm, and rapidly contain yellow fever outbreaks at the point of source so that they don't spread uh, widely. 
uh, the frame, this framework, which looks ambitious, builds on some successes we have recently made. You may recall that in 2005, frequent outbreaks in West Africa led to the launch of the Yellow Fever Initiative, with support from Gavi, resulting in the protection of most people in this sub-region in West Africa. It enabled the vaccination of 114 million people and has since then, since 2010, eliminated yellow fever outbreaks in big urban centers in West Africa. So we we'll build on successes like that. The framework highlights, of course, some key guiding principles, describes priority interventions and actions for member states, WHO, and partners to undertake. As I conclude, among the actions in the framework, there are emphasis on surveillance and laboratory capacity strengthening in the region, the application of the international health regulations, the involvement of the private sector, especially the mining and agroforestry industries, and broader aspects of vector control. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to respond to the issue of inadequate vaccines, the framework presents to you the projection of the global yellow fever vaccine supply outlook in the next 10 years to give some reassurance that we are likely to have uh, uh, vaccines uh, at the time we need. Lastly, the framework proposes some targets and milestones. Distinguished delegates, honorable ministers, knowing that a single dose of yellow fever vaccine per person confers a lifelong immunity, elimination of yellow fever epidemics is indeed a quick public health gain. It is possible. Therefore, the Secretariat submits to you the document for review and adoption. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Dr. Yoti, especially when you highlight that yellow fever is potential to spreading rapidly. So I now invite honorable delegates to make their contributions, their comments, questions. I note Liberia, Zambia, Burkina Faso, Congo, Angola, Côte d'Ivoire, Ghana, Senegal, Angola, Angola Nigeria, Cameroon. Uh, which one is that one? Sound to me, principe. Sound to me, principe. Cameroon, Togo, Mali, DRC, DRC, Mexico, United Republic of Tanzania, Guinea. Zambia is noted already. U Uganda, Guinea. Guinea. Okay, which country have I left out? No, Mali, Mali. Mali. Mali we have. Mali. No, which country has not raised its flag? So it's really... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to read the list. Make sure okay. I'll read the list and just Liberia, Cameroon, Nigeria, Zambia, Burkina Faso, Congo, Angola, Côte d'Ivoire, Ghana, Senegal, Ango uh, Senegal um, um, Mali, Togo, Sawatome and Principe, Tanzania, DRC, Guinea. Guinea, and Uganda. Okay, I'll give the floor now to Liberia. Thank you, Chair. Liberia wishes to express thanks and appreciation to the Secretary for this important strategy to eliminate yellow fever epidemics 2017-2026. The process to elimination is not a new terminology to us because we have done a great job in many of the African countries in the eradication of polio. Hence, it is achievable provided the two premises are taken into consideration. Availability of adequate vaccine which has been documented in the paper and strengthening the international health regulations. Yellow, yellow vaccine availability is a major challenge to the elimination. Although Africa share a major health burden, we continue to depend on others to help us in mitigating our burdens. 
Therefore, a concerted effort is needed to strengthen our resolve in conglomerating our expertise to the benefit of our people. This requires looking at the best practices we have adopted in our individual countries that have helped us in the polio elimination. Furthermore, we need to pay keen attention to our quality assurance issues and building institutes of excellence that meet the acceptable international standards in its functionality that will enable us to begin to produce our own vaccines and other consumables, but taking into consideration the consolidation of finances that will yield to sustainability of the institutions. While it is true that the international health regulations have set the guiding principles that will help individual countries to protect its borders, enforcement is still an issue. The need for countries to be innovative in its immunization strategy, which will lead to effective coverage, is key. With effective coverage coupled with strong enforcement, pair the requirement of the IHR elimination of yellow, yellow fever epidemic is plausible. Liberia supports the adoption of the strategy. Thank you. Thank you, Liberia, for highlighting the importance of, uh, of immunization and vaccination. Um, where is the list? Is this the list? Okay. Uh, Cameroon, followed by Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Cameroon also wanted to appreciate the quality of this document that has been produced by the Director Regional Secretariat. Cameroon adhered strictly to the 2017-2026 global strategy to eliminate yellow fever in Africa. And to do that, we uh, give weekly reports of yellow fever in our surveillance system. And if there is any incidence of yellow fever anywhere in the country, there is a stringent outbreak response in our country. We have created frontal help posts with vaccination facility to vaccinate anybody who comes in and leaves the country. Also, we have created international vaccination centers to vaccinate anybody that comes and wants to be vaccinated before traveling. We also do quantify the yellow fever vaccine, but it is well known that this vaccine is not available now. And we are thankful to, to the reports that we have just received now but we're going to have the vaccine in great quantities in the next 10 years. Cameroon is an exigency for you to come in or leave with a yellow international vaccination card. That must be proven that you are vaccinated from your country. And if you don't get the vaccination from your country, we'll give you at the airport before you enter our country, before you leave our country. But the problem we have, the challenges, are that our boundaries are very porous. So we are thinking to develop and a round system where we can follow anybody coming in, not through the regular entry points, because as you leave neighboring countries, there are some small, small passages which we have not been able to, ma to master, and that is in our next plan of action to be able to respond to this strategy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Cameroon, for highlighting, especially vaccination at the border posts. And at airports. Nigeria followed by Zambia. Nigeria, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Nigeria supports the document and congratulates the RC for the preparation. Yellow fever is clearly a public health challenge, especially in the light of climate change and its effect on the habitat of animals that are reservoirs of the virus. It is considered endemic in Nigeria and its control is given high priority in our health system in view of the significant number of persons at risk. Our population and the high human traffic through our ports of entry and exit increase the risk of importation of yellow fever from other countries where outbreaks are known to have occurred. Although there have been no confirmed outbreaks in, in, uh, in recent times in Nigeria as a result of previous initiatives, surveillance has continued strictly. An absence of outbreaks is due in part to Nigeria embracing and adopting regional control measures, which include 
administration of the yellow fever vaccine at, as part of our routine immunization program and enforcing the 2005 international health regulation for travelers. Nigeria will continue to align with the global strategy to eliminate yellow fever epidemics 2017-2026 uh, by consistently enforcing the IHR 2005, strengthening routine immunization, working to build a resilient health system that should, by the end of 2019, start and complete preventive mass yellow fever campaigns. The availability of a vaccine offering lifelong immunity is, however, a relief in the light of the current global economic situation. Nigeria is currently strengthening its laboratory network to maintain high diagnostic capability to confirm yellow fever should the need arise, especially in its capacity as host of the ECOWAS CDC and the West African Regional Collaborating Center for the Africa CDC. Our efforts to implement preventive mass yellow fever vaccination campaigns have been hampered by limited yellow fever vaccine supplies globally. It is our desire that World Health Organization assists to advocate to yellow fever endemic countries, advocate for yellow fever endemic countries to ensure that their travelers are well aware of vaccination needs in their destination countries and that such vaccines are obtained as required at least 10 days before a trip in the case of yellow fever. WHO can also assist in collaborating with vaccine manufacturers to ensure vaccines are available for use in older children not currently covered by a routine immunization schedule and for purposes of past vaccination campaigns. This will help to improve herd immunity, vaccine coverage, and prevent future outbreaks. For its part, Nigeria desires and is look in, looking into partnering with the private sector in the production of this vaccine in country to be able to meet our needs. Nigeria therefore again supports the adoption of the actions proposed in this framework. Thank you. Thank you, Nigeria, for em again emphasizing vaccination and your, your target of uh, producing vaccines in country. Uh, Zambia followed by Burkina Faso. Thank you, Chair. Um, I join uh, countries that have spoken before in applauding the Secretariat for um, a clear direction provided in this important regional implementation framework. And given the recent yellow fever outbreaks uh, we have witnessed in the region, it is indeed an important uh, document and it's important that member states respond to the guidance provided. Zambia has not recorded a laboratory confirmed case of yellow fever in the last 50 years. However, we recognize the risk we face as a country and collectively as a region. Chairperson, allow me to mention that we have now put measures in place to conduct our first preventive mass yellow fever vaccination, targeting the provinces that we consider vulnerable. But we also recognize the global demand for yellow fever vaccine far outstrips the supply and we urge Secretariat to continue its strong advocacy for increased vaccine production to ensure that high vaccine coverage rates are achieved and sustained. We recognize the importance of cross-border collaboration, including information sharing in yellow fever surveillance response, and appreciate the efforts of the World Health Organization in fostering such initiatives. Uh, Chair, let me conclude by reiterating that Zambia supports the priority interventions um, and actions of the framework for implementing the strategy to eliminate yellow fever. We will endeavor to do our part to contribute to the success of the strategy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zambia. Um, and you mentioned the issue of mass yellow fever vaccination. Um, Burkina Faso, you have the floor, followed by Congo. Le
Burkina Sali aux autres délégations pour féliciter le secrétariat pour la qualité du document cadre pour la mise en œuvre de la stratégie mondiale pour l'élimination des épidémies de fièvre jaune dans la région africaine et soutient donc son adoption. Le Burkina a mis en place une surveillance très active des zictères pour détecter très rapidement les cas de fièvre jaune et procéder à une vaccination réactive. La vaccination systématique est intégrée dans le programme élargi de vaccination. La vaccination systématique aussi des voyageurs est intégrée avec un contrôle strict au point d'entrée. Nous restons cependant avec une difficulté qui est la disponibilité des vaccins lié à un problème de l'insuffisance du financement. Le budget de l'État n'arrive pas à couvrir les besoins, Gavi n'arrive pas à couvrir nos besoins. Il semble exister des fonds de relais de l'UNICEF et de la Banque mondiale que nous cherchons à explorer. Mais ça, c'est un problème, la disponibilité des vaccins. Notre contribution, cependant, dans ce document excellent, est lié au faible, à la faible emphase mise dans ce que nous pouvons gagner dans la recherche pour accélérer l'élimination des épidémies de fièvre jaune. Le document ne met pas suffisamment en avant une telle stratégie. Alors qu'aujourd'hui, la faible efficacité vaccinale que nous rencontrons dans les différentes évaluations est liée à l'assujettissement des vaccins à une chaîne de froid toujours mal maîtrisée dans nos pays. Comment développer des vaccins libres de chaînes de froid est un défi que la recherche peut relever. Récemment, la technologie indienne a développé un vaccin contre les rotavirus libre de chaînes de froid par des équipes de MSF basées au Niger avec d'autres universités. Et c'est un exemple. Ce vaccin a été, est aujourd'hui aussi efficace que les autres vaccins rotavirus existants, sinon plus efficaces, mais totalement libres de chaînes de froid, vu les températures que nous connaissons dans la région du Sahel. Deuxièmement, pour préserver le vaccin anti-amaril, il a été exploré des doses fractionnées, mais l'évaluation reste insuffisante et nous suggérons une vraie évaluation clinique puisse permettre de démontrer si cela peut permettre de gagner, de faire plus avec moins. Et ça, c'est un défi d'efficience de notre programme vaccinal. Et tout ça, la recherche peut apporter des éléments pour accélérer. Voilà la contribution du Burkina. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Burkina Faso, and your emphasis on research and the interesting point that India now has a vaccine that does not require the, the cold chain. Um, uh, Burkina Faso, thank you. Um,
durant l'épidémie qui a sévi 2015-2016 chez nos pays voisins. Nous avons donc à constater des faiblesses importantes en ce qui concerne les capacités diagnostiques. En effet, des cas suspects ont été donc identifiés dans la partie sud-est du Congo et la confirmation diagnostique n'a pu être faite. Par contre, donc, l'infirmation diagnostique n'est arrivée que près d'un mois après, après que les laboratoires de référence affilés à l'OMS aient indiqué qu'il ne s'agissait pas des cas de fièvre jaune. Ces faiblesses diagnostiques démontrent de nos capacités faibles et de l'impossibilité de réagir dans les temps alors qu'il sévissait des grandes épidémies dans les zones urbaines proches du Congo. Il est important, par conséquent, que le Centre africain du diagnostic, le CDC, qui a été mis en place avec l'appui de l'OMS, puisse renforcer les capacités diagnostiques à travers les sous-régions par leur comité relais ainsi qu'au niveau du pays, pour que devant des épidémies de pareille ampleur, on ne puisse plus faire face à des hésitations. C'est la raison pour laquelle, sur le document, il est important que les capacités diagnostiques soient renforcées au niveau des États. Deuxième point d'intervention, c'est sur la disponibilité des vaccins. Cela a été donc relevé par nos prédécesseurs. Évidemment, certains pays, comme la RDC et l'Angola, ont eu des, des gros problèmes, des gros soucis pour acquérir des vaccins pour essayer de couvrir cette épidémie en zone urbaine. Il est important que l'OMS maintienne la pression auprès des producteurs afin que nous disposons des stocks d'alerte, de réserve pour faire face à l'émergence et la réémergence des épidémies et surtout de permettre à ce que la systématisation des vaccins puisse en routine permettre de conforter l'immunité des populations afin d'aller vers l'éradication de cette fièvre jaune. Troisième point d'intervention, nous avons donc adopté à la 70e Assemblée mondiale de la santé le cadre mondial de lutte antivectorielle. Je crois que dans les interventions qui ont été soumises par le secrétariat, cela sort vraiment de façon très discrète. Nous souhaitons ici que le renforcement de la lutte antivectorielle intègre plusieurs aspects, notamment qui ne se limitent pas euh, au, au vecteur de la fièvre jaune, mais par contre, par, par conséquent, à tous les apparentés, ce qui entraîne donc le chikungunya, la dengue, qui sont proches et qui, dans certains cas, comme le chikungunya, sévissent maintenant à l'état endémique dans certains états, dans nos pays. Je crois que le pont avec la fièvre jaune n'est pas lointain. Et par conséquent, s'il y avait des activités de l'identique vectorielle, il est important que l'OMS insiste pour que ces activités soient transfrontalières parce que je ne suis pas qu un sûr qu'un vecteur qui échappe au Congo-Brazzaville ne puisse pas être, se, passe, passe, passe se réfugier de l'autre côté du fleuve en RDC, de l'autre côté au Gabon, et par conséquent, il est important que des approches sous-régionales soient renforcées dans cette lutte anti-vectorielle, mais que cela ne soit pas théorique. Il faudrait que ces aspects soient bien intègrent les plans nationaux et que les plans que l'OMS doit apporter pour renforcer les capacités des États. Voilà, Monsieur le Président, l'essentiel de ce que j'avais donc apporté comme contribution sur ce document, qui est important certes, mais qui doit prendre en compte certaines spécificités en tenant compte du danger représenté par ces vecteurs. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much, Congo, for highlighting the need for strengthening the rapid diagnostic tests and also the issue of vector control, which is the mosquito. Uh, how do we manage that uh, cross borders? Angola followed by Côte d'Ivoire. Muito obrigado, Senhor Presidente, Senhora Diretora Regional, estimados ministros, delegados e demais participantes. A delegação de Angola felicita o Secretariado e a Diretora Regional por ter trazido este assunto à apreciação deste Comitê Regional. Angola resistiu de dezembro de 2015. A junho de 2016, uma epidemia de febre amarela sem precedentes, considerando a sua magnitude e transcendência. O surto com epicentro numa zona urbana de intensidade de, de, de intensa atividade comercial, superpovoada, de grande mobilidade de pessoas de alta densidade vectorial, teve uma rápida propagação em todo o território do país. É de recordar que Angola tem cerca de 26 milhões de habitantes 
tem na cidade de Luanda, nossa capital, aproximadamente 7 milhões. Para conter a circulação do vírus, a estratégia inicialmente definida pelo país, que envolvia a vacinação massiva de toda a população e também o controle vectorial em todo o país, não pode ser concretizada. A escassa disponibilidade de vacina no mercado mundial obrigou o governo de Angola a realizar a vacinação massiva da população por fases, com base na priorização dos municípios, segundo o risco epidemiológico e de acordo com a disponibilização de vacinas pelos organismos internacionais que controlam, a nível global, a sua distribuição. Gostaríamos de referir que até a presente data foram implementadas oito fases de campanhas de vacinação massiva que permitiram vacinar um total de 20 milhões 677 mil e 25 pessoas de 118 municípios de maior risco, atingindo uma cobertura média nos municípios vacinados de 95% e de 80% considerando a população alvo nacional. Senhor Presidente, Senhora Diretor Regional, a experiência de Angola, cuja epidemia iniciou na área urbana com notificação de primeiros casos entre cidadãos imigrantes não efetivamente vacinados, demonstra claramente a importância do cumprimento rigoroso do Regulamento Sanitário Internacional, no que concerne a viajantes de e para países com alto risco de febre amarela a par da cooperação internacional, regional, subregional e transfronteriça, bem como a rápida partilha de informação. A indisponibilidade de vacinas no mercado mundial cria enormes dificuldades aos países, fazendo com que não consigam alcançar as metas preconizadas, ainda que haja vontade política e disponibilidade de recursos financeiros, sendo urgente uma reflexão sobre os níveis de estoque mundiais da vacina. A questão relacionada com a rápida confirmação laboratorial, conforme foi referido pelo Congo, é outro aspecto pre preocupante, pois nem todos os países possuem capacidade para o efeito. Por outro lado, é necessário que se faça a acreditação de mais laboratórios regionais, reforçando a sua capacidade técnica. Consideramos que a estratégia mundial para eliminar as epidemias de febre amarela para o período de 2017-2026 deve ser amplamente disseminada, permitindo o seu maior conhecimento, a apropriação e aplicação pelos países. Para concluir, Sr. Presidente, e considerando a forma como foram apresentados aspectos constantes no documento, a delegação de Angola endossa a aprovação do mesmo. Muito obrigado pela vossa atenção. Obrigado. I think now um, we need to break for lunch because there is an important side event in Kalala Room, which is in the hotel, and we need to break for to start at one o'clock, and that uh, make sure that we are back here for two o'clock because we still have a very, very, very long list. About ten other countries have not spoken on this topic alone, let alone the other ones that are coming. You said 2? 2.30. Okay, I'm being reminded that is 2.30. You come back at 2.30. Uh, thank you very much. So, 2.30 to resume here. So, those uh, side event, Kalala Room, first floor um, in the main hotel. We break for lunch. Not to ask the secretary. Uh, the secretariat, have you got any announcement? No, if none, then uh, let's break for lunch and go to those who are going to the Kalala room. Let's go.